Got the man Nerve up in the building. How you doing, bro? Yeah, not bad. Just got into Adelaide. You're yeah, on your uh, on your tour. Yeah, Mama's Boy tour. Just kicking it, man. In enjoying uh, first time in Adelaide, so it's mm. good. Yeah, yeah. Like enjoying the laid back vibes. Yeah, it's pretty chill here. <laughs> like, yeah, it was nice and flat, easy to get around, sort of thing. You know, we got a nice little Airbnb and shit. We're just chilling. <laughs> As you do. Resting. Yeah. And so, uh, in regard to the, the tour, I mean, you've done, I think, a couple of shows now? Nui and Sydney. Yep, and how did they? They were mad. Yeah. Um, first time in Newcastle as well, and it was sick. Venue staff were mad. They made us fried chicken and shit, and um, <laughs> we had, like, rooms upstairs. <laughs> I ended up, like, yeah, crowd was sick. They were heaps stoked to have us in Newcastle, obviously. Everyone knew, like, all the words to every song. It was mad. Huge energy. Um did my first shoey after the show, so that was good. <laughs> yeah, I understand with shoeys, like, I performed in the shoes that I did the shoey in, right? So, like, the beer's going into your mouth, but you're also smelling your socks. That's the hard part, you know what I mean? So you did that shit on stage at your last show? I did it doing the meet and greet, actually, like, afterwards. So I was doing a meet and greet, <laughs> and this guy was like, crep check. So I was like, yeah, man, I had 90, oh, I had, I had 270s on. And I was like, yeah, man. And I pulled him up, pulled the shoe off. And then he was like, oh, shoey. And I was like, well, fuck, I got to do it now. Oh, Yeah, it was wow. good shit. <laughs> Just like a whole beer, bang. There's footage of it somewhere. And then, yeah, Sydney was mad. Same deal. That was a sold out show. Um, just mayhem, pretty much at that point. Triple One dudes rocked up and we smashed shit with them and then had after party. So, yeah, it was sick. It's been good so far, man. And then, so you've got the Adelaide show tonight. And mm. then you've got like a couple other shows this weekend. Yeah, so Adelaide tonight, Hobart tomorrow, and then Melbourne on Saturday. So it's just bang, bang, bang. So what's that, six cities, five cities? Five cities down, one to go after that, Brisbane. So we're coming back to the hometown for the last show. Ah, word, yeah, as you should. It's going to be a big one. Yeah, mm. sick. And so this is your first national tour? I guess it's the biggest. Yeah, okay. Because we did a tour for A-Bomb, but that was just Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. And that was just for one single. Mm. And then this one's like, you know create an EP, drop an EP, tour the EP. So I guess it's a lot bigger because yeah, um, okay. this is six six stops instead of three. So yeah, it's the biggest thing we've undertaken as like a crew and just myself with music as well. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah, Dome, you got Scrub. He's yeah. with you for some of the shows or the whole tour? He's here for Brizzy, Newcastle, Adelaide. Mm. And he's a Brisbane boy as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's from... Musclebrook in New South Wales, but he's been living in Brizzy for the last three three years or so. Yeah. Okay. Ever since I met him, I met him in Brisbane. He came up for a holiday and then ended up staying for <laughs> yeah, three years. <laughs> yeah. Word. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I guess uh, you know, in regards to the new release, and we'll talk about all your all your previous stuff as well. But so it's an EP. Um, tell us a little bit about it because when we spoke to you on the phone the other night mm. you said you know we mentioned how it's a little bit different the mm. whole mama's boy thing you know hip hop's a pretty rough rugged and raw mm. sort of <laughs> mm. sort of thing and you've come with the complete flip yeah. um is there a bit of strategy to that or um i think like wouldn't you don't really have to read too deep into it because the music i guess it doesn't sound like everything else i've done but it still sounds like me and um, it's not like I've done a full 180 and I'm on some like bitch shit with the mama's boy thing. <laughs> like I'm still doing my shit. I'm just being funny. Yeah. But yeah, like um, I would say the EP is real geared towards live performances. Mm. Like just smashing the shit out of shows. But there's also like some slower stuff, more melodic as well, dipping into some singing. And then also just like some more stuff that explains like my life and actually about myself, which mm. I don't think I did too much of you know like in early stages of, of my music so like it's kind of just a bit of everything in one and um just yeah trying to find my own sound you know and I think I have because um the fans are really connecting like a way that they haven't before like everything's just kind of elevated with this project I feel like with mm. being myself and finding my own sound and um yeah so that's pretty much the vibe but I can't really explain what it sounds like because I don't think it sounds like anything else. I know a lot of people say that shit and it's corny, but that's the goal, right? Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's good right. fun. The first time I caught on to you was that Snot Rocket joint. Mm. And 
and I can't remember how long ago it was, but like that came out 2017, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I reckon it would have been like a few months after you dropped it. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing is, is I, I, I remember I found it. I was like, this is dope. I, li- I gave it like three or four listens. And by the end of it, I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. who's this dude? Yeah. And then coincidentally, really like a week later or a few days later, mm. just sent me a, a clip of of you. Mm. I think it was a different one. Mm. He's like, check this dude out. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? That's the same dude. Mm. And then that's when I caught onto your stuff. But prior to that, you were... Um, you were like in a group or a mm. couple of groups? Yeah, I was in a group called Syntax Junkies. So yeah. there was like four MCs and then like three producers, but I was an MC and a producer. So there was like six of us kind of thing. But it was kind of just whatever, whoever was involved in the track was involved sort of thing. Mm. And um, we put together a 22 track album and a six track EP and we dropped all that stuff. And then while we were making the 22 track, I was making my own stuff. Mm. and then just kind of slowly kept doing more and more solo stuff and then snot rocket was probably like the first proper proper solo joint i put out amongst all of that stuff and um yeah just connected hey connected like real well it was probably the first um proper i think music video i did on a solo track with kyle golly no we went around like our local area and just shot it at like a bar in the park all that sort of stuff and we were just like, yeah, let's just shoot something funny, whatever. Dropped it, and then it just connected like mad. Like it's still one of my top videos on YouTube, and it's where a lot of people found. So it wasn't just me, me that was bugging out. When no, they- it was heaps of people. Because <laughs> like it was, it was like a mad track. Like it, it was like, I feel like it was like cla- it was classic kind of hip hop, but it sounded a bit different. It had a different energy, and also yeah, like man. the first sixteen bars was the same multi like the whole way through. Like I spazzed on on that shit when I was because at the time I was like obsessed with writing multis and yeah. punchlines and stuff so i just like went crazy on it at that point but yeah yeah, yeah no nah, okay it come out dope mm. um and so yeah so you were doing the group thing and then you know that's the first solo thing that you've put out mm. and then i guess from that point from that song then how did sort of things develop from there um i was working on that song and like i met scrub did some stuff with him and then me and Scrub did like our first, like the day we met, we did a one take together and that got heaps of traction. It got shared by like 360 on Facebook and also Greeley. And that was mm. when Greeley hit me up and he was like, this is dope. And I was like, oh shit. Like all my mates like had been listening to Greeley since they were younger and stuff, you know? So like it was a big deal and Greeley messaged us. And then me and Kyle lived together at the time and he was just like, bro, like let's go to Hobart, let's go meet up with Greeley and stuff. And we were, and I was like, oh, I don't know, like, I don't know if I got money or whatever, but he was like, no, nah, we're going to do it, let's do it. So, like, we planned to go to Hobart. In the middle of all that, I'd started making a bit of grime with my British mate, mm. dropped something with him, and then Fracture shared it. So, like, within this two-week or one-week period, oh. I was getting, like, love from, like, OGs in hip-hop yeah. and OGs in grime. So Golly was like, fuck it, let's go to Hobart and meet up with Greeley. And then the next weekend, go to Melbourne and do 50 50 because a 50 50 event was on. And those, um, those, fr- those events have a like fracture. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like we went down to Hobart first time into state, played with Greeley. And then next weekend, we go and did 50 50. So we'd made those plans. And then I was planning to do a track with Greeley before I went down. And then he goes, oh, check this guy out. And he shows me Wombat. He showed me like his little bars video with Wombat and I was like, shit, okay, mad. Let's get Wombat on the track and like sent through the verses and it was the ones for IED. I don't know if you've seen that video, but we shot it in Hobart when we went down there. It's me, Greeley and Wombat. It's like an older track. It's like came out at the start of 2017. Um, and So that was after Snot Rocket. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we just whipped that together real quick and... Um, yeah, that was dope. And that when I got Wombat's verse back, I was like, holy shit. And like went down and f- like got him on another track by the time we went down. Went down, met him, got along real well. When I met him, it was funny as actually I didn't know it was him. He looked heaps different to what I thought. Like I thought he had black hair. And I like jumped in the car and he was like, oh, like the EP dropped the day I got down there. And he's like, oh, hey, man, like the EP's dope as hell. And like he was on one of the tracks. And I was like, oh, cheers, bro. 
and like didn't know it was Wombat. And then we like got out of the car half an hour <laughs> later and I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> hey. No, it was funny as, man. But um, yeah, bro, that was like kind of where it all started, eh? Like going down there and then doing like a week later was doing the show with Wombat and we got mad love for that. So that was kind of like, yeah, I can't remember what the question was, but that's some <laughs> shit. There you go. Nah, and then so with the with the stuff that you did with Wombat, did you guys just do a few tracks? You got an EP. Yeah, like we got an EP, EP together. Yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the Night uh, Shift? That's right. Mm, that's Night what Shift I was EP. trying. Yeah, that's mm. what I was trying to remember. And then so from that point on, you guys have sort of kicked on and. Yeah, we haven't done a whole lot together since then, actually. But like that made a huge impact when we did do it. Um, we were like getting mad energy from doing like grime shows in melbourne and like a lot of ciphers and stuff and that was kind of the tip we were on at the time mm. and wombat's always been obsessed with grime and i was making heaps of grime beats so like once we once we did a couple of shows together we just had a mad energy going so i went back to brisbane and i just was pumping out tracks like i would make a beat write a hook do all my verses send him the whole track with just gaps for his bits and he oh, would send yeah. back verses and we got the whole thing done like real quick yes and then yeah. once it was done we were like mad and then we put it out and it just like like the two tracks off that are still in like my top five on spotify like they were just like heavy and like they connected really hard and like yeah it was good man it was like a big part of me and wombat coming up together so yeah, like, well, yeah. now nah, shout out to wombat man he yeah. was here like i think a week or two ago yeah yeah he had a show um, here with flea yeah and they sold the shit out yeah it's mad yeah it's hectic <laughs> it's yeah. Um, and he's got, do you know much about, he's got a battle coming up with that. Is it Mr. Wrigley? Righty. Righty, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a grime. It's like a grime clash thing, yeah. So how does a, gl a grime clash work? Because I've never actually seen anything like that before. I'm just used to the traditional yeah. you know, rap battle sort of. Yeah, so I guess it's like pretty different to like a rap battle in that it's kind of been born out of the UK scene, um, not so much Australia. So I guess like a lot of people like in Australia are like, not 100% sure what the what difference is yeah. but it's kind of just you know like same deal as like a rap battle but you're spitting on beat you're spitting mm. on grind beats you usually go like 16 for 16 and um yeah it's kind of just like who's the best like uh, any other battle sort of thing yeah. would be but it's written format it's not like the yeah it's not freestyle yeah well i mean you could you but could. you probably wouldn't want to um and yeah i don't know a whole lot about it at this point either but i know that it's like a private event and it's just going to be filmed and there'll be no judges it'll just be up to public opinion sort of thing oh. you know so that's happening in january but um yeah i don't know a whole heap about it i've just yeah. been like seeing whatever yeah i've Instagram seen little bits that. and pieces but i haven't actually followed up too much about it yeah but like i actually was on the phone to wombat this morning because i'm going to see him tomorrow mm. And um, yeah, he's G'd up, bro. He's gonna smash it. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Nah, I look he, forward to yeah, watching he's, that. He's a passionate. He's a passionate man. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna go hard. I think I discovered Wombat through chilling it. Cause yeah. Done. They did heaps together, together in 2018. Yeah, and we brought them out together yeah. um, last year for a gig. Um, and you've actually also got a a joint with Chill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Where you been? Yeah. So when yeah. did that drop, and then how did that song come about? That song, so in February 2018, I flew Wombat up to do a show and then I was like, fuck it, like I'll fly Chill and Talakai up as well. And this was like definitely pre everyone popping off. Like mm. this was still early days for everybody. Like none of us like really were like making too much money off stuff. Like Talakai and Chill had just done their Get Body tour, which was like really good. They did a good job on that. And um yeah i flew them all up and we did a show and we just had mad energy from all being together when chill went back to sydney i pretty much i was at uni at the time and i was just like keen to make a track so i made a beat sending the beat he was down and we just wrote verses like texting them to each other all day mm. and we wrote the whole track in a day like we were both like on, on a vibe yeah like just right because we <laughs> just wrote back uni. to back 16s yeah because we have there's four verses each in that track like four 16s each and like, so it was a pretty long track. It's like a five minute track and um, recorded it, whatever. And then we went down to Melbourne a bit later for a 50-50 where we all went and Golly just filmed it. And um, I used it as like one of the main singles for the album I dropped that year. And it just went like <sighs> nuts. Mm. Like it's got like nearly a million YouTube, like it's like 750,000 views on YouTube and like- Yeah, wow. Yeah, it just like popped. Cause we just like, 
um it was kind of just on the cusp of everyone popping off and like we had a mad energy at the time it was all really natural like just really organic so it just like came together heaps well and like it's still like one of the biggest tracks so it's mad yeah it was a good track yeah dope yeah. and then so do you think that you guys might do something together in the future yeah like that's always on the cards with like everybody it's yeah. just we need to be in the right place at the right, right time. time i feel like yeah. you can't force that stuff nah. like me and chill like we still like always talking same with me and wombat but if we're not in the same city in the same studio hitting like a vibe it's like Doesn't you happen. just don't want to force stuff and also like i didn't want to get too involved in any artist while they were blowing up because you don't want to be riding on their coattails and riding on their fan base. Mm. I was very conscious of the fact that like, okay, <laughs> Chill and Wombat, they're blowing up right now. I don't want to do a track with them just because they're popping off. Yeah. Because then I won't have my own fan base, right? I'll have like Chill and Wombat's fans. I can have my own fan base and they can also like Chill and Wombat. Yeah, crossover. You know what I mean? And that's like, like we have a massive crossover in fan base. Like we all blew up together. Mm. So like, yeah, but I didn't, I, want, I was conscious of the fact that I'm, for longevity i'm gonna to have to build my own fan base and do it like have fans that like me because they want to see me not because they want to see like the other, other people next. yeah exactly yeah. so like if that if there was any reason that i haven't done it um much since then it would be that you know mm -hmm. but like now it would be hectic because everyone's got their own established fan base and yeah. like job it's got even more effect like i might have fans that haven't heard of chill and wombat they might they'll have fans that haven't heard of me now, if we do something, it would be like, bang. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah. Ah, I look forward to it, man. Yeah. Um, now, I think you briefly mentioned uh, like the Get Bodied Festival. Yeah. And so that was 2018. Yeah. So that came off the back of when Chill and Talakai did the Get Bodied like, trilogy of songs. Mm. So they had Get Bodied 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, they yeah, did a yeah. tour just with themselves. So they did like a Chill and Tal little tour in the end of 2017. And then Chill turned it into a festival and got like everybody on it. Mm. And that was, that's what you were talking about in 2018. And, and the then so you, because there was an incident that happened at the Brisbane one. Yeah. Where the police shut it down or yeah, something. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was hectic. So can you detail us, like walk us through like what led up to that and you know, what happened and then what happened afterwards? I don't know exactly what happened, but like the whole night was just crazy energy mm. because like, I don't think any independent artist has ever sold out that venue. So how big was the venue? It'd be eight or nine hundred. It was okay. a Trifford, which is um, I might have this wrong, but the guy in Silverchair, I think, owns it or runs it. Like it's well, an iconic venue. It, it's yeah. it's like an aircraft hangar. It's a dope ass venue. Like it's sick. And this in um, Brisbane. It's in Brisbane. Yeah, it's in Newstead, and like. We sold it out. Like I remember after we did the first Get Body Festival, Chill called me and he's like, yeah, we're going to do Trifford next. And I was like, holy shit, like this is going to be big. Mm -hmm. And like, cause not only is it a big venue, but the venue looks good. Like footage of the venue looks good. Like I knew it was going to look good if we packed it out. And um, it was just a huge night. Like everybody was up. The shit was already sold out. We knew there was going to be 800 people in there watching us. So like energy was just crazy. So you sold it out before. The yeah, before. Opened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah and it was word. like, well, it was like LG's, Mitch Oss, me and Wombat, Chill and Talakai, Husky and Little Snow, Triple One. Uh, yeah, bro, it was a massive lineup. Like Scrub as well, some other local dudes, huge lineup. Um, and I think shit was just crazy. Like <laughs> it's in an area where once you walk out the front door, there's not a whole lot to do. Like mm -hmm. you got to walk somewhere or like get an Uber. Yeah. And I think like, there would have been a police presence just because there's 900 people yeah, and in it's a room, young or whatever. People, yeah. And I think like, um, yeah, I think like the show, I don't know. I don't know if the show got shut down, but I just know that when people were leaving, um, they just were, you know, having altercations with the cops. It obviously escalated. And then like eight cop cars rocked up. You had people jumping on shit and it was just nuts. And the funniest thing about it was, the week before that show, me and Chill dropped Where You Been. And there was a bar that he spat in that song that was like something, something, something like, I can't remember the words exactly, but it was something about like having a crazy buzz till we hit the Channel 9 news. And then a week later, we hit the Channel 9 news because <laughs> of the show. So like that was wild. And like 
that just was hectic. But like the whole time this riot was happening out the front, I had a box full of merch and I ran down the street the other way, chucked it in a shopping trolley and I was selling t-shirts. But like no one had any cash. So I had like a square reader with me, you know, those little FPOS tap things. And I was just fucking everybody's head up because they were like, bro, I don't have any cash, man. And I was like, don't worry, I'll take card tap here. And they get shook. I don't know what to do. Yeah, then. because who what other dudes rolling around? Yeah. And like some of them, like you could tell they couldn't afford it, but they just bought it because they were like sick, man. Like Dang. I respect that. Man, I do That's it. That's yeah. classic. And I did that for like ages, bro. I still do that. Like I did a tour with Triple One and like it was at a bowls club. After my set, I just took like a, like a 30 liter backpackers bag outside and just like got drunk as fuck with fans and smoked heaps of sickies and just sold them all t-shirts. I made like a thousand bucks in half an hour. It was just like bang, 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 bang. It was is that, sick. Is that using your Yeah, you the square awesome reader, yeah. Because cash is just a fuck around, bro, like, you know. I bet you people see this interview, like artists and they'll start it, doing and it. And they'll eh? start doing yeah, it. Smokers we're... area, that's where you make your money. You go to the smokers <laughs> area and just push the, push the tees, man. That's gold. Yeah. So that so that festival, I mean, that show did go ahead. Yeah. Um, and it obviously went ahead all the way to the end. It was just at the end of the gig, there were yeah. notifications with five O out the front. Yeah. And yeah. then that's when you were selling chilling, your shit. Selling my shit. I was keeping the kids away from the riot, you know what I mean? <laughs> and taking their money. But you know, it's whatever. Yeah, you know, you're a good guy. For the people, Maybe. bro. For the people. Yeah. In terms of you know, your musical tastes, your style, your influences, and you come up. be interesting to to know what you were listening to, you know, when you first picked up a pen or even before that. Mm. Um, because when I first came across Snot Rocket, it's got that boom bap mm. sort of, you know, feel to it. But it is a bit different. It's got a bit of a different vibe. It's yeah. more like, I don't know if the word happy. It's just, I don't know. It's just something positive, yeah. but it's got that boom bap sort of feel to yeah, it's it. It's kind of playful. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. the video, you know, it's shot. It just looks like a sunny day, I think, when you guys shot it. And it just, yeah. it, 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 I remember when I first caught it, I was like, "This is some boom bap sounding shit from a young dude. Don't know where he's from. It's got a cool vibe to it." Yeah, and that's why I kept on re spinning. Yeah, it. mad. Um, so I'm kind of curious to know who were some of the guys that you were listening to when you first picked up a pen, and then also, you know, now, who was yeah, some of you, if that's changed. Well, before I ever listened to hip hop, uh, my dad brought me up on like a, a whole lot of stuff. But the the main thing was he got me onto this band when I was younger called The Meters, and they're like New Orleans funk, straight uh, out of New Orleans, yeah, like yeah, old yeah, school yeah. funk. I bro. know what that. I know. So yeah. like before I ever listened to hip hop, I was listening to shit that made hip hop, funk like, soul and all that. Yeah, like funk soul. Start listening to hip hop, and I'm like, wait, I heard that before. Cause like yeah. people sample the meters, and so it was like that was where the producer brain like already kicked in, um, and like I figured out what sampling was like as soon as I kind of started listening, because I was like, man, I heard that stuff before. They must have just taken it, done this and that. Mm. Um, so like the meters, funk stuff, all of that. Um, when I first listened to hip hop, it was like I just had a mate. I was like fifteen. Like I got into hip hop pretty late, to be fair. Um, had a mate show me like Wu Tang and Tyler the Creator, so it was like mm. twenty years apart, listening to both these albums for the first time at the same time. So it was like real weird, you know. Like I was listening to new and old, and just kind of like working my way inwards. So it was like Wu Tang, like uh, damn, it was like Grave Diggers, like all this crazy '90s shit, yeah. and like you know Tribe, um, Far Side. You know, like Dre, Snoop, all of that. And then I was listening to like Tyler, the Creator, Odd Future, ASAP Rocky, blah, blah, blah. And just like kind of met in the middle. 50 Cent. No, but like, I never listened to that much 50 Cent. But like that's kind of, yeah. But um, yeah, and then I guess I think when I started trying to actually like write and rap, I was like more so taking the piss. I was listening to this duo called the Palmer Squares. They're from the US. They're just these two white dudes that just had like nerdy little raps, like with mad references. And me and my mate, we just like used to put them on at parties and just spit the whole song to our friends, like just someone else's song. And I was like, you know what, let's just make our own one. And then we started doing that. And he was like, oh, this is weird. But I was like, no, nah, this is sick. And I just kept doing it. Started writing and then like started making beats with another mate. I was listening to early days, like when I was actually recording shit in my closet and that, like... I had like a closet filled with egg cartons. Yeah, the good old days. Full proper. That's where everyone starts. Yeah, bro. Out, I was listening to it like Company Flow. Oh, um, word. So like real that's OG Canadian. shit. Is that Canadian? No, nah, that's dudes? um, that's LP and like a couple other. That's dudes. right. Yeah. That's like full New York shit. Like that shit is like, 
if you were gonna like say any album is like underground hip hop, that's, that's the fucking one. underground hip hop. Yeah, there's, they've got one which got like a colorful sort of picture. Yeah, cover. with like aliens on it. Yes, yeah. I remember seeing that on the record. Fun Crusher back Plus. In the day. Yeah, I've got that's, that on wax, bro. That yeah. shit's like classic. But yeah, super weird. I was listening to a lot of Aesop Rock. Yep. Like really verbose. Weird Before Aesop hip-hop. Rocky came out. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> really verbose, weird shit. That was like my early days stuff. Like just trying to be as like niche and like i was in first couple of years of uni so i was studying like neuroscience psychology and quantum physics and i was reading books all the time and i just had a dictionary on my ipod like every day just like so like every new verse i wrote i would just add all these stupid ridiculous words into it (laughs) and it was kind of like me like learning how to do shit and then i had to like simplify it back down Mm. so people could actually understand Understand it it, my shit was so like underground like if i heard if if someone was like yo check this out and they were like 19 and showed me the same shit that i was doing in 19 i'd be like yeah it's like hectic but like this is hard to listen to bro like i don't even know what you're talking about right now you know what i mean like it was sick it It was like super niche shit but yeah like and then i guess like yeah now like i'm listening to like i don't know just like i listen to a lot of shit that's like not hip-hop so much but well, like you know just like fun stuff i'm trying to like i was really hip-hop orientated now i'm kind of like yeah obviously like i grew up on hip-hop and i started off making hip-hop but i'm trying to make like music music yeah at the moment like i'm working on stuff with like adrian eagle and like mm. singers and like musicians you did and stuff. the joint with the hoods yeah like adrian big, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, he's yeah shout a outs beast. to him man he's good yeah dude, he's eh? a beast yeah um, so I'm trying to work on something with him and like lock that in because like that'd Sick. be that's exact like if you were talking about where I want to go is yeah. doing music with a dude like him yeah. making like music music um, I obviously still love like rapping you mm. know but like I'm trying to switch it up constantly because that's like where longevity comes from if I do the same thing for three years like who's gonna yeah. yeah and like I'm a producer more than a rapper i think in like in what i like and what i get energy from is like making music for myself and other people like if i get if i could be sitting in a studio making hits for people in terms of production and songwriting that's what i'd be doing like dr Mm -hmm. dre shit so like i'm just trying to make music so then who are some of your like favorite producers when you were you know coming up and um with hip-hop premiere madlib dre um like yeah Bro, like Premier is like the goat, hundred percent. That's your number in, in one. Doing the most with the least. Premier or Dr. Dre? I'd have to say Premier. Yeah, make doing the most with the least, man. Like he would be making like classics with like three seconds of sample time. Like he'd only be able to have three seconds of samples on yeah. a beat, and he would make classics. Like when I was coming up and doing bars videos on YouTube, it was never not a DJ Premier beat. Like they, for like. His beats make rappers shit rappers sound good. Good. <laughs> yeah. It's that's what I used to always yeah. say. So it like, makes a dude want to pick up a pen and write or yeah. a DJ want to get on the decks. And yeah. Cut. Yeah. It's the most hip hop shit out. Yeah. So like if you're talking hip hop, premiere like bang. Like best. Best at just the funk. Mm. Otherwise I feel like because of the music I listened to growing up, I had a good idea of just like funk and like some people have funk, some people don't. Some music has funk, some doesn't. But like I've always just been like it's gotta have funk. Or like I'm not down with it. <laughs> yeah, like it's not what I fuck with. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So yeah. Um, and then I guess in terms of Australian producers and Australian MCs, because mm. once you know a lot of dudes pick up a pen, you've been listening to US shit, and then it's when they pick up a pen and start doing it themselves, then they become a bit more familiar and ingrained in the local stuff mm. so when you've started you know writing your raps and putting out videos and that who were some of your local influences um obviously like mostly just the people i was meeting because like yeah to be fair i was like because of my generation i was brought up by overseas sort of music yeah and overseas hip-hop and i think that happens a lot in my generation that's why you find a lot of people like just straight up rapping in an american accent mm. i've never really fucked with that like I've never really had like a, a like a huge like opposition to it. It's not like I like I'm gonna beat someone up because they rap in an American accent. <laughs> but I'm just like I probably wouldn't do it. Do it. Yeah. Or like or like work on a track, maybe. Mm. You know. Or like, but that's only if they're like straight true blue. Like I know heaps of people from the states that are here. Obviously, well, that's a different and that's story. Different story. Yeah. 
but um but yeah like over here it was when i was meeting people man like when i met Greeley, like hanging out with Greeley, i watched him and i was like shit and then like meeting chill meeting husky meeting wombat um even like retainer like mm. i did tracks with retainer Sydney way dude. back no he's from melbourne melbourne dude. yeah and like um yeah just like i kind of learned about the game by being in it and there was a lot of times when i was younger when i was meeting people and being like fuck i should know who you are before i met you like i feel mm. like a dickhead <laughs> but but like it, it was innocent like it was what it was like luckily like golly like videographer no one network ceo whatever you want to call him he knows way more about the local scene than i do and he mm. always like kept me in check he would be like this is that this is that check blah, this blah, blah. out yeah he was he's that. like the he's like the the guy with the knowledge so he always like kept my head straight with that shit and yeah. but yeah like yeah just like i was just heavily influenced by like everyone that i met everyone around me you know and, so um, you weren't really listening to the the aussie rap that was coming out say 2000 to 2010 like your nah. old goods no nah, not really no nah. commission yeah yeah and that wasn't that wasn't um on purpose it was that i wasn't even listening to hip-hop until like 2015 and when i was shown hip-hop i was shown what yeah overseas stuff shit. so yeah. i like didn't i i wasn't even privy to any of the stuff until i was getting into it into it like obviously i know who the hilltop woods are mm. like they're fucking massive but you weren't cranking it when you yeah, were going yeah. to school and shit like yeah, that yeah yeah did you ever check out lyrical commission stages set i listened to them when i was starting to make stuff because of like lyrical commission like in terms of like yeah underground hip-hop like was the, the fucking shit B's and A's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly and that's exactly what we were making like my old crew like syntax junkies that if you listen to flavor. the like we made a fucking 22 track album four mcs on every track like if you listen to that you'd be like yeah these dudes definitely listen to lyrical commission or yeah. like these dudes definitely listen to rhyme asylum or like something like that you know like it was like straight up like 50 percent horrorcore 50 percent punchlines and just like all just hard shit <laughs> yeah it was it was hectic days so if i said to you your top five Aussie MCs at the moment, like your favorite, not in an order, okay. just the top five that come to mind. And bearing in mind, this is off the top of your head, so don't. <laughs> I Bro, see, the politics, man. The yeah, I can nah, see nah, your face now. Nah, nah but what like... I did say on the phone was like, for obvious reasons, chill, because like, he's just done some crazy shit. It's been crazy to oh, watch. It's game changer. Game, literally game yeah. changing. Yeah. Wombat, because it's fucking Wombat. Like that would be most people's, he'd be, have to be in everyone's top five. Who's the other guy I said? On the phone. I don't know. I, I got to say JK47. He's, a, he's on my EP. He's like my age, kind of up and coming. If you haven't heard of him, check him out. He's loose. He's like butter on a beat, bro. He's yeah, king. Man. He's from Tweed Heads up in Queensland. Um, he's got all his brothers wrapped too. They go by ECB, like East Coast Brotherhood. He's a beast. Um, shit, bro. So there's three. Mm. Oh, man. It's so hard to think right now. Four's hard and five's the hardest. <laughs> I'll just do an honorable, uh, I'll do an honorable mention halfway through. Have you seen Lil Sick? Oh man, bro! Yeah, homeboy put me on to him literally like a week or two ago. He's, he's like, hilarious. Ma Melbourne, and actually, Melbourne. No, dude, no, I think he's from Brisbane. I think he's from the Gold Coast. Dude, he whatever I saw, the hook was catchy. As he fuck, is man. like he like like <laughs> I first saw him like a year ago. He was under Lil Sick Can, and I was like, oh, like oh, is that this what is a piss take. For? Yeah, I was oh. like, oh, this is a piss take, and like I still think it might be like a piss take, but like. I heard it again with like, <laughs> he, he came back this year with like better production and better videos. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Man, I, did the same thing. I was like, oh, like, okay. And like, and he's like, he's really genuine. I saw him put up a video and he's like, hey guys, um, I had a gig booked in Brisbane for like this date. And he's like, but um, Chill and Husky are doing a show on the same day. So I've sold no tickets. And I'm just like, hey, can you guys change your gig? And I just watched it and I was like, bro, like that is the funniest shit. Like it's so like, like just like, I don't know, he's just- Innocent? Uh, yeah, and just, just like, he's just nuts out there, bro. <laughs> like he's just like, oi, can you guys change your gig? This is bullshit. Whereas most people would be like, man, fuck these guys. Man. Like, he's just like, oi, like, but then he just changed his date. And like, I don't know, I just think he's funny, bro. So that's an honorable mention. Yeah. Like 
That was a great bro, honorable he's, mention. Bro, bro. <laughs> like, I've never spoken to him, but I should probably hit him up and just be like, bro, like, <laughs> I love this. Because we've never had a guy that's like, like, I feel, well, we have, we've had like Jimmy the Junkie and shit, but like, but he wasn't a he wasn't rapper. rapper. But he now it's like, you know, like when um that uh, Michael Dapper dude did Man's Not Hot in the UK. Oh, yeah, 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 Lil yeah. Little Sick yeah. reminds me of that. that. But like, yeah, it reminded actually, me a little like, bit of Little Dicky. Yeah, know, yeah Little Dicky. Yeah, just yeah. that comedic. Yeah. But yeah, you probably checked the same song that I checked not that long ago. It's like the beat, the hook, the production. I was just like, because I'm spinning clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a second, I was just like, what the you fuck? Play I, I would shit. jack this hook yeah. and just slip it in the club yeah, <laughs> just to see what happens. Because mm. by the th- second or third time I checked it, I was just like. <laughs> mm. I'm trying to think of four or five MCs. Damn, who do I listen to? Shit. Um, God damn. I got to say like Husky as well. Like mm. I feel like I'm just shouting out the people that I came up with. No, but, but like, that's bro, if like, that's who you yeah, you know. every, like that body, the booth he did way back, way, yeah. way back. That changed everything. Like I remember when we were all giving each other shit, like back, back when we were like, Husky was the first one to hit 100K and he was like the 100K club. <laughs> like he was like, yeah, 100K club. And that was like, thinking back on that, it's like mad because yeah. like when I met everybody, we were meeting in like someone's shed and we had like a show that night and it was like 200 people and we we're all like, holy shit. And now it's like, Far out, bro. Like, these dudes are going crazy. But, yeah, like, Husky's, like, like in terms of storytelling and, like, just, like, I don't know, bro. Like, I've I've been in a hotel room and him, like, rapping to me. And, like, he's such a natural. Like, he could be, like, off his head and, like, drunk or, like, whatever. And he just, like, nails it. And, like, everything he says, he says the most with the least, which is, like, a big thing for me. And, like... I like I was like one time I was listening to him rap and I was like I don't know what made me think of it but I was like you play guitar or like piano or something cuz like he was his voice was like an instrument cuz he's not <laughs> he's not got flow like anyone else you listen to his old shit you're yeah. like you don't sound like anyone you don't sound like you're trying to be anyone he's just doing it and it just just that's why people grab onto it like there's no one like husky and there never will be mm. so like that's got to be in there five shit uh this is the hardest one yeah bro i don't know like um shit mcs i just like feel like there's so much stuff at the moment that's like not like mcs like not the right word for it because people are doing all sorts of different stuff um i'll just give a shout out to just hp boys bro they're just mad like, I know there's three of them, but like... No, that's fine. They can loose. do groups. You can they're do loose. groups. Bro, like, Bad and Bouge has just been on repeat. That shit's so hard. I'm doing a show with them too soon, which Man, is... Man, uh, they're Melbourne yeah. dudes. Yeah, yeah. They did that joint engineers. Yeah. With that get, dude. Yeah. Boy, man, that If is, they're watching, that is... I've got beats for you. <laughs> I've got instrumentals for them, bro. So does my boy Smack. Yeah. Yeah, that engineers sick. joint, I was yeah. just like, wow, this yeah. is dope. They switched it up completely. And I love that... They're being lumped in with all the drill stuff, like, because there's, like, you know, heaps of islanders, like, killing shit right now. Mm. But, like, they don't make drill. Like, that's a lot. Of, they, they're not yeah, making Yeah, I mean, that music. engineer's joint it's, it's is like, a hip-hop It's joint. like YG. It's straight, like, they've never, because peop, people, like, all these, like, islanders and, like, pollies are coming out and just, like, getting crazy views. And a lot of them are doing drill. But I don't think people here understand that drill is, like, a genre and not just, like, if they're an islander, it's drill. <laughs> You know, like, I understand why it's all lumped together. And, like, it is a sound because they've got, like, their vibe going and it's sick. Like, they're killing shit. But, yeah, like, HP boys don't make drill. They just make dope shit. Like, you could play that in a club and it would just go off. And I've seen it go off in clubs, man. It's yeah, like, I had I had someone come up to me and when people start requesting Australian stuff in an R&B club... That's when you get... That's when you know that's it's popping. That's when I'm like, what the fuck? Have so, you had regress, requests for, like, no effect and shit? Uh, I just know how to because when you're in the club, it's so much going on. Like, mm. but I just know that um, one four yeah HP boys in the club have been requested Jeeps. in the club yeah, and once it happened, the first time it happened, I was like, took my headphones off, like, huh? Is that what? <laughs> really? And then it happened a second, a third time. I was just like, oh no yeah. shit! Like you guys are actually breaking the you know the R and B club sort of vibes. It's nuts! I think people are. Becoming way more proud of Australia right now. Mm. I think that 
what we're seeing right now, especially with the Islanders, is like I I don't know. Like I'm probably not the best person to ask, but from what I've seen, I don't think they've been represented fully, like for a bit. Mm. And then like all these people have come out just smashing shit, and now you've got this like as soon as you see a thumbnail on YouTube of like a large group of dudes that are like <laughs> Islanders, bro, it's just Everyone and it's all play. good shit too, bro. Like yeah. none of it that I've heard is like as bad as like a lot of the stuff that like comes out, you know, like it's all good. Mm. And like, I think it's mad cause I feel like they're getting represented and they're doing their bit and it's like massive. Like I think HP boys are doing like a New Zealand tour and like, that's mad. That's so sick. That'll do, that'll, that'll do, do huge. Very well. And their show, the, the one they did in Brisbane with one four, like the wrap up video for that was fucking mental, man. Like yeah, loose bro. Loose. I, I think that's footage of that. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah, I think I think I saw that like a few days ago. It looks crazy, yeah, and, man. And like the hits they're getting are mad. And, was like, that show the one that's on you? That was was that in Brisbane? Yeah, Eaton's Hill. Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. that looks hectic. It's man. like a twenty two hundred cap. They sold it out in four days. Loose, <laughs> so loose. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. So I guess yeah, that that shit won't slow down anytime soon. I don't. I think. don't think so. No. It's like a new pocket that's just sort of gone. It's thriving, man. Yeah. And it's like really cool to be doing a show with them soon and like be a part of it. Because mm. I feel like I'm definitely not part of that pocket. But no matter what happens, if it's Australian, it's good. Like a mm. good thing for everybody. Because like we're get. I feel like like if that keeps happening and like the whole scene gets taken more seriously. People are going to start getting paid more than they've ever been Absolutely. paid. People are going to start going overseas. People are going to start getting like Spotify is picking up on it too, man. Like all the Aussie hip hop stuff that's getting playlisted and smashed on Spotify because they're starting to realize what's going on. What impact do you think Curse has had on the game? And do you remember the first time that you came across his music? I think um, just in terms of like being an entrepreneur and like doing it yourself, definitely mm -hmm. huge. Like, the thing is, like, yeah, before I ever listened to hip-hop or Aussie hip-hop, I know who Cursor was. Because, mm. like, people either loved him or they hated him. Like, he was a very polarizing figure. Yeah. When, like, you had, like, Don't Fuck With Cursor and you had, like, the 360 versus Cursor battle. Like, yeah, a lot of people would just take the piss. But, like, regardless of if you're taking the piss, like, publicity is publicity, man. Like, I had mates that, like, at first, like, he did that remix of Miss Jackson. Mm. it's called like highest yeah, man yeah I remember that I remember yeah. like I had mates that would like put it on and like take the piss and then a mm. week later they'd be like nah I'm actually bumping this shit now <laughs> like, he's actually dope and it was like you know like I never paid it any mind and then I remember chatting to like yeah like one of the dudes I met in Melbourne when we started like going around and he like kind of opened my eyes to just like he was like yeah say, say what you want about his music but like his grind is crazy and he's just created this whole thing for himself mm -hmm. so like yeah definitely big impact big impact do you yeah. remember did you watch the 360 cursor battle when it came out yeah went back when i was in school yeah the funny thing was i think that was like there was just so much hype about it like mm. i didn't i don't think i even really knew who they were like when that like i just knew who they were like i was like 14 15 and yeah that shit was hilarious like everyone watched that at school and stuff man like and i wouldn't even say i had any friends that were into aussie hip hop and everyone and was were watching, watching that. It. everyone was watching <laughs> it's that. crazy yeah it was hey. nuts yeah it was like probably i think i think like it has a record for like how quickly it hit a million views for like a rap battle like in the world even maybe i don't know wow. it was loose it was loose yeah well i think you'd have to say that to this day it's probably you know arguably the biggest rap battle in mm. aussie hip hop huge yeah huge has um, to be I can't think of anything bigger. I guess in terms of where you think hip hop will be 10 years from now in Australia. Mm. Um, I think that one of the problems that we have had in Australia is it feels like we're 10 years behind, but I think that the gap's closing mainly due to the internet and social media and the whole age that we live in. I think the gap's closing like, it was 10 years for a while, you know, just because of how it is. But now, like, you know, you've got one four. They are like their numbers are like bigger than most artists that do drill in the UK. And that's where it started. Mm. So like we're proper, proper catching up. And so I think in 10 years, like who knows, but I do think that we'll be making stuff that is a first 
in a lot of places. Like obviously there's Australian artists and bands that have made firsts. Like, mm. But in terms of hip hop, I think that we'll be doing a lot of firsts and we could potentially be having a lot more artists that just like blow up worldwide and put Australia on the map. I think that's what's going to be happening. If you had to pick one act, you know, group, solo, whatever, who you think will break the US market, who would you put your money on? At in, the moment. In hip hop? In hip hop. I think it would have to be like, um, I would say HP boys, but I think they just resonate so hard with Australians. I don't know. I think it's a lot of Australia and, and the UK, but I also think that a lot of stuff that Heft is doing is really crazy as well mm. with like having like a bunch of rap at the start of a track and then just dropping into like dubstep and EDM yeah. is just crazy. What's that crazy joint that he's got? No effect. All... Yeah, man. No when effect. I first no, heard that, I was like... Bro, that, you'll get requests for that in the club. Yeah, 100%. I was like, wow, this is some different... And by the third time I played it, I was just like, yeah, this is dope. <laughs> this yeah. is catchy as As fun. long as an artist can portray... Because there's so much stuff in all of those tracks, like 1-4, HP Boys, Hefs, all this drill shit, that people from not Australia just won't get it. Mm, like they won't yeah. like a lot of them wouldn't even get like the islander vibe like they wouldn't even know what that is yeah, they wouldn't even know what like, someone from fiji or yeah. like tonga or samoa or solomon islands even looks like you know what i mean or mm. like new zealand like they won't they won't get it but like we get it because we like grew up around that yeah. and like went to school with like you know what i mean so so may not yeah cross over but it does it is so yeah i think like one four HP boys, yep. Hefs, like they're all doing bits and they're they're connecting overseas in terms of hip hop, mm. definitely. Um, obviously, Leroy has already kind of done that, mm. but like he's got a long way to go and he's still young. But like, yeah, like, yeah, hectic. You mentioned that you went to university for a bit mm. and that you were studying. Um, at the I'm still technically like at uni. I'm just taking a bit of time off. So I started with um, physics and psychology, went into physics and engineering, and now I'm just doing straight engineering, electrical. So yeah, electrical engineering is technically what I'm doing. So is that what you do to become a Sparky or is that completely different? Yeah, that's completely um, different. Yeah. Sparky would be like TAFE. Oh yeah, because that's an yeah. apprenticeship with TAFE studies. Yeah, I'm doing like what you would be to, I guess, design automated systems or like program like big like it's all sort of stuff there's heaps man like it, it would be like at the moment i'm i'm doing like switch i'm like doing engineering drawings for like a switchboard company yeah wow so yeah it's like a massive departure from every other aspect of my life <laughs> yeah, it keeps me in I, check man it keeps me in check yeah i was gonna say do you find it's good to have a balance between the music and the music life yeah you can't get too caught up in music like especially in hip-hop there's too much competition and comparisons and like i think sometimes you need something to stop your ego from getting out of hand because i could go and play a sold out show and think i'm the shit and then i you know come into uni or like come into work and it's just like you're just out, like just another kid but mm. it's also funny because like now i'll go to uni and I, I was about to walk into an exam and i was stressing and this guy just comes up and slaps me on the back and he's like bro nerve what are you doing here and i was like oh my god i was like bro i got this exam he's like oh me too man good luck and congrats on like uh your tour and shit because i was just on tour with triple one and like <laughs> yeah that was weird and then like same thing like go to a go to a job and the first guy i meet at work is like enter the e to the rve and like shakes my hand i'm like far out i can't get a break <laughs> So then is your aspiration to do music full time or to do the more nine to five thing or you're kind of just covering all bases and seeing what happens? I guess music full time would be mad, but I'm being realistic about it. <laughs> yeah. I think that like, I don't have to be a front man for my whole life. You know, like I said before, like I'd be happy to produce and mm. engineer and songwrite. But you know, yeah, like keeping my options open, you know, see what fingers happens. in all the pies. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the plan. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.